how are y'all doing? It's really late. It's getting close to midnight, so I can't stay on long. Um, but the Lord gave me a word tonight, and um, so I was, I was really travailing. I was really travailing in prayer. Uh, I was crying and praying with a true heart, um, and the Spirit of the Lord started explaining to me how prayer works prayer that God will answer you and he said so it's according to the the word he and this is you know the Holy Spirit exalts the word does he leads us into all truth he's always exalting Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the word and and so I'm, I wrote everything down so I'm reading it from this but uh, so he said it's according to his written the Lord's written word or any rhema word that God has ever spoken to a person. And um, then he reminded me, he said, as Jesus said, as Jesus said, if my word abides in you and you abide in me, you can ask whatsoever you will and it will be given to thee. I feel the glory of God coming on my head already. It's just coming up the back of my head. <laughs> He said, it will be done unto thee. And um, he said, this means whatever you ask me for, you must know the word concerning that subject. He said, you must look to the word, weigh it by the word, and then request make your request by that word he said you must and you almost must you also must be in right standing with God so if if the word abides in you he let me say it how it's written if my word abides in you and you abide in me that's what Jesus said if you're if my word abides in you and you abide in me you can ask whatsoever you will and I will give it unto thee so he's explaining to me what he means by this because you know we can't have all the word inside of us like jesus christ is the living word we are living epistles being written so i'm like lord how can your word abide in us like we don't know the answer to everything like today i was praying for a homosexual and i was crying and travailing and just begging and praying lord please Please bring them out of sin. They've been like this their whole life. And now they're trying to make a covenant that they won't be able to get out of. A covenant of marriage with another homosexual like that. And so their whole life, God's grace, had, I feel the fire of God. I mean, God's grace had been on them. But they gave their life to the Lord when they were very young. And so he had a grace over them. But now they are right at the precipice of taking in not holy matrimony but unholy matrimony and i've been praying and travailing and crying and another thing i want to tell you that every time you cry in prayer to the lord the angels gather your tears in bottles they do not one tear is wasted and they don't wipe them up with napkins and towels no i'm on fire i just feel like i'm on fire but the lord wants me to give this word to y'all so this is coming straight from god's throne i guess you would say because it is hot straight off the press he says if you, the way we know that his word abides in us when we are praying he said this is for prayer he said if you want your prayer answered because that's what the scripture says if your word abides in me i mean if your word if if my word abides in you and you abide in me ask whatsoever you will and i will give it unto thee and now he's telling me how to have that word abide in us so of course we have to abide in him that means we have to be in right standing before we do that praying but to have the word abide in us when we go to god in prayer to get our prayer answered he said what we must do is when we're praying and let's just say we'll take this for a, this example tonight of me praying and travailing over the specific subject i'm going to give this as an example he said search the word what does the word teach about that specific subject 
And I know that all the sexually immoral will have their part in the lake that burns with fire. I know that. No effeminate or sexually immoral person can inherit the kingdom of heaven. I know that. And so he told me to, he said, well, search the word in your heart. Search the word to see which would apply for this. What would make me answer this prayer for you? What is something written in my word that you could stand on that would make me answer this prayer for you? And I was like, well, and so let me just, I can't remember what I prayed, so I'm going to read this. He said, find what applies. Um... He said, as you make your request, okay, find in the Word, search. He said, if you have to stop in prayer and go look it up, however you have to do it. But the way I did is I just searched my Word bank of what I know of God's Word, and I started thinking, uh, what would be the answer to this? Like, what is in His Scriptures that I could use for a homosexual that was once saved but has lived a life of sin now and they're near the end of their life but they're thinking of do they actually have it planned that they're going to be marrying the same sex and the Lord was telling me that it was going to break that protective hedge that he has over them of their original salvation because he has not blotted their name out yet I've talked to him about that you know God can blot our name out and um but anyway I've been I've uh, been crying and travailing for this person and so he said you'll have to ask according to my word and I can't you know what I'm sitting here reading the answer and I don't even think I wrote this down I get interrupted so much because I have such a big family and a, I'm always having people contact me and I don't think I wrote it down but I think the scripture that I started I prayed that he would send the spirit of the fear of the Lord to them. Oh, and I prayed that he would convict them over their sin because the Holy Spirit was telling me that no man can enter into heaven lest he repent. That was it. That was the key. The Lord told me in this specific case that the only way that he will be able to answer my prayer on this is that they must repent. That's what he told me. So that's what I prayed. I was like, Lord. See, and the Holy Ghost is reminding this to me because I, had, I didn't write it down. I thought I'd write it down, but I didn't. But that... That was the word. His word abided in me. Like it is in me. And I searched my word bank and I found. And then the Holy Spirit also helped me to find it. Because he leads us into all truth. So if his word abides in us. And we abide in him. When we pray according to his word. That's what he said. Because his word abides in us. That's what it means. It abides in us. And so when we pray. We're going to be using that word that abides in us. And he will answer all your prayers. That's the reason a lot of y'all get your prayers answered like you pray for others and God is answering your prayers because you were praying led by the spirit and you were praying the word of God if we pray the word of God back to God that's how he answers our prayers right but in this specific case I could have prayed anything send them um, the fear of the Lord send them uh, you know uh, save their soul I could pray all these things but the word is if a person is living in sin what must a person do to be freed jesus christ has already made the way he's already freed them they just have to accept they they have to accept the love of the truth remember today earlier the we were talking about those that end up in the lake of fire the the uh unbelieving the fearful and unbelieving they would not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved so what the Holy Spirit led me the answer and the key to that prayer being answered by God is if I, I would pray that they would repent that God would help them to repent that he would send 
a true seed of repentance in them and they would repent of their sin and receive the love of the truth that they might be saved you know the lord can and i said lord and i prayed this too i added this because we're allowed to to speak things that are not as though they are and I said and Lord I pray that you'll do whatever it takes whatever it takes to cause them to repent so they can be saved because I want them in heaven with me I don't want them to go to hell and further I don't want them to enter into an unholy union because it would give Satan power over their life and it would destroy it could destroy their family and their children and everything like uh, there's a lot of things been happening in their life anyway and so they really need to be under and we're living in a day and time now that we really need to be under God's grace see but the but the word that he gave me tonight is if his word abides in us and we abide in him we can ask anything and he would give it to us so when you're praying no matter what subject he said look at your subject matter whatever your the prayer is about hone in on that and then check the word in your heart you can look it up if you have to but just check through the word and what does the word say about that subject if it's an issue over sin and people are living in sin the answer is they must repent People, you can't just pray God to bless. They can't be saved through just being blessed. Like you can't, there's certain things that's never going to work, like no matter what we pray. And we can always pray all these things. And if we're just praying things that is not going to work, like he's not going to answer that. But if you want your prayers to be answered, you have to, the word has to abide in you. When you're praying, you have to bring the word back to God's remembrance. So does that make sense? He gave me that. And, I, you know, I basically already know this. But sometimes when we're praying, you know, we, we are not searching God's word over to call it back to him. Sometimes we're just praying things. And, you know, it's a hit and miss. A lot of our prayers are hit and miss. Like, I'm not... We're probably blessed if the Lord even answers 50% of our prayers because most of us don't really know how to pray right so um, he gave me that word and then he started he gave me a word about numbers and um, he gave me 12 uh, quit Esther he gave me uh, 12 a uh, divine ways a person can strengthen uh, their love with Christ and their relationship with Christ. And 12 means divine governmental completion or heavenly divine governmental completion. I've got animals trying to turn this camera over. I'll keep having to move it. Um, so, okay, he, he says, um, so there are 12 divine ways a person can increase the relationship with of love with God and he said devotion to God is first and devotion to God is love submission to God is love uh, servitude to God is love obedience to God is love forgiving others is love and it, 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 we have to, like, so God loves it when we forgive others. Forgiving yourself, God loves that. It's love. Helping the poor, he loves that. It's love. Praying for all mankind is love. Praying for the lost sinner is love. Praise, praising God is love. Witnessing to people, witnessing, witnessing to him God's word and his, his way, his love. It is love. Giving is, is love. 
And then I had a little extra one on the side and it was giving glory to God is love. So really there was 13, but uh, giving glory to God and um, praising him is about the same. As for quit, she is, come over here, sit down. She's just working it over trying to get, um, here's that black and white cat, Sheila. Say hello. Get down, girl. <laughs> it's like, um, and I think that's all I have this late at night. So I'm going to, I give y'all that and then I'm just going to pray for you and then we'll call it a night. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I lift up all those that have subscribed to the channel, Lord. I lift them up. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that if they have any sin in their life, Lord, that you will uh, give them the, the uh, seed in their heart to repent. I pray that you'll call them to repent, Lord, that you will draw them out. It would be like fishing for a fish. And, and that you'll reel them in, Lord. And no matter what the sin is, Lord, they will come to you. If they come to you, the word says that if they come to you and, and call upon your name or confess their sin, that you would be just and faithful to forgive them of their sins. And you would remember their inequities no more. You said you would put their sins as far as the east is from the west away from uh, you. That you would not remember it anymore. So right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I ask you to do that. I ask you to save each one, Lord, that is in a sin bondage. And uh, many believe that they can live in sin and um, enter into heaven. But heaven is holy and no... Um, Sin cannot enter into heaven, and um, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And so we all have to repent. And a true repentance is freedom. And true repentance, you don't live in sin anymore. When you truly, when Christ sets us free, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So if we're living in the inequity of sin, or if we're living in deceit, or uh, with a lie, or in rebellion to God you know just living a lie is being a liar and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire so let's just say you're living with somebody and you are not married and let's say you suffer with pornography so you you're shacked up with somebody y'all are not married and you have trouble with pornography well good grief you're not you you didn't take holy matrimony so your bed's not holy and god can't put a covering over you and then you wonder why you're plagued with a, a demonic presence that causes you to sin and pornography you have to repent and uh if you are going to live with somebody and bed them and exchange your waters you know that's how demons transfer through waters through uh, fluids and also through winds but um, if you're going to be with somebody and your souls are going to cross like that, you need to be married so God can bless you. And then, two, he can break uh, strongholds. He can break. I see a lot of people think if you marry somebody, it'd be worse for you because you would have, you'd take on a bunch of their demons and a bunch of their stuff. But no, it's the other way around. God puts a protection on you when you marry, even if that other person has sin and they're not even saved yet because the bible talks about you're allowed to marry an unsaved person if you can dwell with them it is okay and god your children are still be holy uh, but god will put a protective covering over you if you'll if you'll do what is right by god he loves us to do what is right he is holy he cannot even look on sin if he can't even look on sin how his how would he look on you if you're living a lie if you're living with someone and you're not married how would god even look on you how would he come and just sit with you all and and teach you and and minister to you and how's the holy spirit going to dwell with you when god can't look on sin 
So it's like you live in a lie. You're, you are sin. Okay? Do you understand? God is holy. I'm not trying to come down on you hard. But it's so easy to be married. You can be married in 24 hours today. You can get a bishop. There are online bishops that can marry you uh, online. Or you can, you don't even have to have a blood test now. So you can do a, a quiet ceremony with a person that is just licensed. Like a minister. You can just be married by a minister. And if you can't afford to pay for a marriage license, you can get married in the privacy of your own home. Y'all can take hands together. And y'all can do a ceremony before God. And, and put a ring on each other's finger and do it before God and renounce Satan and break all and repent before God for your uh, fornications and say we repent before you God for our fornications and we mar we want to be married and, and we want to be holy before you and we want you to bless us it, a lot of the things would break off of you if you would do what was right see what the Lord told me, he took me to a school one night in the heavens, and y'all know that a lot of times, well, I don't know how many times he's took me in the spirit into heaven. I've been so many times, and there's so many different stories I can tell you that I can't count all of them, but uh, one night he took me, and I was in school all night, and he was showing me how every choice that we would ever make in our life every single choice has a repercussion so if you make a choice that is a wrong choice it's not just going to make one line to something else it's going to break off like a hundred lines and it's going to affect everything so if you make the wrong choice and let's say like you're living a lie you're not married you're living in sin um Think of all the things it affects. It affects everything. Everything. So every choice we make has a lot of repercussions to it. And the Lord told me that our choices are eternal. He said, if we, unless, unless we repent, and you know what repent means? It means to stop and do an about face and turn the opposite way you were going and go the other way. That's what repentance means. To stop turn around and go the other way run away from wherever you, the way you were going don't go that way don't even pass by it go the other way and then go with christ so uh the lord wanted me to say that tonight because some of y'all think that god winks at sin and another thing he was telling me is that satan he has given satan authority the antichrist the beast he has a host of unbelievers, and they are forming the body of the Antichrist. And it is a great beast, and it's going to stretch across all the earth, and it's going to be way bigger than the body of Christ. The body of Christ is going to have a very small number, and it's not going to be anywhere like this beast of the, of the devil. The beast of the devil is going to have so many more people in it. And so what he's doing, he is uh, sending out demons and evil spirits and he's going out too and all those fallen ones and fallen angels and in the spirit they're all going out and they're coming to the children of god and they're coming to the saved they're coming to the lost they're going out to all throughout the earth and they're trying to get inside because hell keeps enlarging itself and 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 the gates keep opening up and the spirits keep flooding out on the earth they haven't even opened the pit yet i can't even imagine what's going to happen when that angel or that messenger falls and has that key and opens that pit i i, I can't even imagine i guess that's going to happen during the three days of darkness that's what some of the prophets are saying that during that three days of darkness is when the pit's going to be opened you know, so I can't even imagine that. And they are going to fly. They're going to go out all over the whole earth. And they're going to be crawling up the sides of the house trying to get in. You know, but the the real house they're trying to get in is this house right here. This is, this is the tent of the Lord. This is the sanctuary. Christ is supposed to live right here in our heart. What, who lives in your heart? 
What is in your heart? The Lord has been showing me some of y'all. And, and he's been showing me that some of y'all are struggling and some of y'all are living a deceptive life. Do you know that deceivers and manipulators have their part in the lake that burns with fire? If you are a deceiver or a manipulator, and, and also, if you're sexually immoral, and you know, you can lose your life at any time. Your soul could be required on this very night and wouldn't it be something if the if your soul was required or if you got killed in a car wreck, God forbid, if something bad happened and you wake up in hell because you enjoyed the flesh more than God. We have to have a reverential fear for the Lord. And I'm not trying to scare y'all, but the Lord, he, he cries. Do you know that there's some, that hell is just enlarging itself every day because of all the souls that are going to hell? They're dropping into hell just like that. More goes to hell than ever thought about going to heaven. It's true. People go to hell uh, so much easier. And, and I know that a lot of people think that almost everybody goes to heaven people are so uh naive about this with heaven and hell they think that they can live a life of sin and believe on jesus and that he, he wipes their sins away and they just get to go into heaven but they get to live like the devil they say well i'm i'm, I'm good you know i've got a church on sunday and i've got a job and i don't do anybody any harm and you know, I give to the poor, and yeah, I, you know, I, I have several sex partners, and I had an abortion, and you know, I support abortion, I support gay marriage, but I'm not bad. I believe in Christ. I believe He's the Son of God. They say things like that, and they say, like, I smoke pot, you know, and I, um... You know, but I don't steal, and I don't, I don't kill anybody, but then they just said that they'd have an abortion, and they support abortion. Um, the Lord says that he's requiring for those that shall believe in Christ, he's requiring them to repent of their sin. It's called repent, do an about face, leave your sins at the altar, and go with Jesus and carry your cross and don't look back and don't pick those sins back up and to walk with Christ he said come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men so anybody that believes in Christ he makes you a fisher of men you are called into the kingdom you are called to do the Great Commission. You are called to be a prayer intercessor. All of us are called to be a prayer intercessor. The Bible says pray without ceasing. So some people say, oh, I'm a prayer intercessor. Well, you're supposed to do Great Commission work too. And then the ones that are doing the Great Commission, you know, they say, well, we got prayer intercessors doing all the prayer. No, each one of us are called to pray. Y'all are going to be amazed like when we finally do get to heaven and we're standing before the Lord and all the things the books are going to be opened and everything that we've done is going to be in those books and it's all going to be put before the lord so we need to be praying now that the lord would take us through that fire now um that he would judge us eternally now that everything that we do for the very elect let me say this the very elect if you are the very elect and you know you are because the Lord tells you, you know if you're the very elect. Some of y'all are. Many of y'all are. There was at least seven of y'all that he showed me that was very elect. And then there was like five of y'all that were like so close to like graduating and being where he would have you to be called the very elect. But if you are the very elect, um, the Lord is putting you through the fire now and, and most everything you're doing right now has eternal consequence but he said in the last days that if it were not so even the very elect would be deceived and I know for a fact that it can happen because I was nearly deceived about a month ago 
you know, and I don't, I don't tell y'all everything, but I was following somebody on YouTube, and I thought they were so high in the kingdom, and they were the grandest thing, and so I was trying to give to their ministry, and when they told me they couldn't take tithe, then I knew something was wrong. They said they weren't allowed, and then the Lord stopped that. I was sending it, and he shut their system down, and it wouldn't go through, and then, um, he showed me, they sent back a word curse against me for wanting to give, told me I would die like a Sephora and an a, a Anias and Sephora for giving a tithe. And I said, no, that's not the word. We're ordered to give our, we, we're, God commanded me to tithe. He absolutely took his spirit away from me for 40 days and 40 nights. And when he gave it back to me, he said, don't you ever rob me again. I had sent the tithe off. And it came back to me after two weeks, and I thought I could just keep it. And I kept it, and I didn't even pray. I didn't even ask him anything, and he chastened me sore. And he commanded me never to rob him, so we're supposed to give our tithes. And he gave me a whole teaching on that. We give our tithe first, then we give our offering, then we can give uh, charity and almsgiving. But tithe is first, offering is second. And he told me like this, he said, if you give your offering and you haven't tithed, you're just casting your seed in the wind. And then one day he took, we were, I was at a church at a first assemblies of God and the Lord told me, he said, uh, go ahead and uh, give your tithes. And I wrote a check for $93. That's how much the tithes was because we had made $930 that week. And so it was $93 and I heard and so that was the tenth. That was the tithe. And then I heard the Lord say, Now, give an offering, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. And I, I just wrote it for another $7. I took another check out, and I wrote a check for $7 to make it $100 even. $93 for tithe, $7 for offering. So it took about, uh, I think it was three days. It was, it was either one day or three days. I'm in. A, I'm on a one. I'm on a one day now. Everything I do comes back on within 24 hours. Um, so back then, I think I was on three days to where it took three days for everything to come to pass. But within three days, I got the $93 back immediately because every time we give, we get that back immediately. But on that $7 I gave, he he times it by 10. And he gave me, and that was the first time he ever taught me about giving. And he gave me a tenfold on that seven dollars, so I got seventy dollars. So I got my tithe back, the ninety-three dollars, and I got seventy dollars. And he told me that he said, "I'm gonna always give you the tithe straight back." He said, "And any offering you give on top of the tithe," he said, "I'm gonna ten times that." Well, then it got to where he did a thirty times, and then it got to where he did a sixty times, then it got to where he'd do a hundred time on that. I'd give the tithe, he give the tithe right back. But he'd give me a, a hundredfold on the offering. And then it got to where he was giving me like a, I mean, he's given me a full one. I, one time I sold $350 into a ministry and he gave me 63400 and something dollars. He sure did. Two houses and $63,000 all in just a couple of days. So, and I, I think I got off track because I was teaching y'all something. Oh, that Sephora and I, she, she told me that I would be cursed for forgiving if she allowed me to give her a tithe, that I would surely be cursed with a curse of death. And I had to go into the courts of heaven. And I said, Lord, I don't even know what's going on with this person. I've never heard of anything like this in my life, but I bring this before you. And then, that, then the Lord showed me there was a warlock that was infiltrated her ministry and it had infiltrated her ministry about 24 hours before that and so when i was trying to send in that couple of hundred dollars on that tithe and god shut that system down so it wouldn't go through on her end he shut it down on her end he was protecting me pay attention to stuff um the Lord tried to protect me again on a, on a on another thing, and if I'd have let Him protect me, I'd have saved me $167. But I wouldn't listen to Him. I just kept pushing it through, making it go through, making it go through. And every card I pulled out, it said it wouldn't use that card, and they were brand new. And I'm like, there's no way that it, it wouldn't my card. It was saying that 
I didn't have any money. I'm like, that's not right. So there's something wrong with this. But I should have not. I should have not let it go through because the Lord showed me that it was it was a total waste. It was. Um, I had went uh, to a place up in it. Well. I, I won't tell you where I went then I don't really tell people where I live so it doesn't matter about that just the thing is you got to learn how to hear God's voice okay and um but anyway uh, he told me how to give and you you pay your tithe and then you do your offering and uh, he gives you back your tithe immediately but your offering is where you make all your money and I have when he showed me how that worked I worked that thing I'm telling you and I still work it so I pay my off my pay my tithes I always pay those just like how he told me he sent me an angel one time and I've told y'all that story. When she came in, the whole house was filled up with dimes. When I got up, there were so many dimes. I looked on the floor, and I was just, I started raking the dimes up. There were hundreds and hundreds of dimes. They were everywhere. Back then, my kids were younger, and I went woke them up. I'm like, did y'all throw dimes all over the house? And they're like, no, Mom, we don't even have any money. They didn't have a job. I knew they didn't have any money, and I didn't have any money. And they're like, I was just doing ministry work. You know, you don't make much doing ministry work. But anyway, that angel came to me, and she said, the Lord told, and she gave me a, a crystal clock, and it had three different times on it. And she told me, she said, I want you, the Lord wants you to give your tithe every month on this date and she told me what date it was and that was like two days away and um she gave me that crystal clock and i could see different times on that clock and one of those times was eternal because the times on the earth were turning like that but the eternal time was fixed and that was the heavenly and uh, she was showing me that crystal clock that if i gave and the timing of the earth there would be seed time and then harvest and i saw that in that crystal clock she gave me okay so then that um the next day um she came and brought me a key because i said yes i'll do this and when i agreed to do it she showed back up in about 18 hours and she brought me a big golden key on a keychain and she gave it to me and it just went around my neck and i had that on and so when the third day came, I went ahead and loosed my tithe. I didn't do an offer, and I just loosed my tithe. And when I did, she showed back up, and she had a big tray. She was a big warfare and angel, and she had a big tray, and it had a huge sword on it. It had a big hook on the end of the sword. There was two swords. They looked identical. And when she brought that big tray in, this huge demon walked in, and his head was as wide as a couch. I'm not joking. He was, and he stunk. Oh my God! And I knew exactly who he was in the spirit. You know, who, who anybody is in the spirit. The spirit cannot lie. If you're in the spirit, you're going to know the answers to stuff. But he would. Back then, I used to have migraines really bad, and he was an ancestral demon that had plagued on my family side. My father, my mother, my two eldest siblings, and me. All, everybody had those migraines. It would make you sick. You'd have to stay in the bed. But that's who he was. He was the giant over migraines. And simultaneously, I don't even know how I needed it. I grabbed that sword, and then she grabbed one sword. And I stood on one side, and she stood on the other side. At the same time, we swung our swords, and we cut that joker's head off. And his head rolled, and that green slime came out. And But the Lord delivered me from those migraines on that day. And everybody in my whole uh, lot and he also in, gave me a gift to deliver people from migraines and from headaches and um, not only that um, after that she told me to give always on that same day every month and if I would pay my tithes every month on that same day that the Lord would do the supernatural miracles with me he would send these angels out and they would bring me gifts from heaven and every month that's what i do but the lord has been reminding me about those offerings because the offering is where you make your money with god you, you're going to get your tithe back so if you give to the lord you're going to get your tithe back and some people get double and triple their tithe back You'll see it immediately. It'll it'll come at least a, a full fold. Sometimes it'll be more than one fold. It'll be two or three. But I know for a fact that on the offering is where you make all your money. So um, 
and he's going to give a minimum of a 10 of a tenfold but if you sow during the time of famine and we are in the time of famine because we're in the time of the great falling away don't you doubt it this is the time of darkness and growth and the gross darkness is in the people so we are in the time of the famine of the word and when you sow in the time of famine abraham and uh, he reaped a hundredfold. And I, I checked what a fold is. A fold is not like, let's say you sow $10 and you reap one fold. You would think you would get $20. So you get double. That's not right. A fold is like, it is like, um, I don't know how to explain it. It, it, it doubles. But then it doubles again and it doubles again. So one fold might be 20, but then after that, it flips again. And another fold would be 40, and then another fold would be 80, and then another fold. And it would, so folds are more than just doubles and triples. It, it ends up being a lot more. But anyway, I don't know what even got me on that. Oh, yeah, I know, because that girl. Okay, so the Lord delivered me from that ministry, and I thought she was some great one. I mean, I'm telling you, I thought this girl, uh, she th she said she was the leader of the 144,000, and I thought, well, golly, I'm, uh, I thought Christ was our leader in it, and two, I don't think nobody could be the leader of the whole 144,000 unless all 144,000 would know who she is like how would they they don't even know there's only so many that are even looking like <laughs> when you have like a few hundred people looking at your channel there's no way you're the leader of the whole 144,000 or they would all the whole 144,000 would be tuning in every day to hear you know but anyway to make a long story short we got to be careful nowadays the lord said that we can be uh, the very elect. That's what we were talking about, the very elect. If it wasn't, uh, he, said, he, he said, let's go to it, Matthew 24. He said he's going to shorten the days for us. And um, Well, verse uh, 22 of Matthew 24 he said except that those days should be shortened there should be no flesh would be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened what he means by that is we're not going to have to go through the hour of trial there's going to be an hour of trial that is going to come on all the sinners but if you are holy and you sin not, and you stay repented, you will not have to go through the hour of trial, okay? The Lord is wanting me to tell y'all that the devil and his angels and his kingdom, they are dispatching. Evil spirits are being sent out, and they are coming to tempt the men and the women of earth, the children and the teens, and they want you to sin, and they want you to not repent. They do not want you to believe in Christ, and they want to, you know, that door to be opened of sin. It's a sin door. It opens up in you, and then they can use you like a puppet. They can get inside of you. Well, if they get inside of you, and you have the, you are marked. You're marked with a mark of the serpent, with that mark of that beast. You have the serpent DNA in you if you sin. So this is why you need to repent. You got to get rid of all that serpentine DNA, and you got to stop them demons from being able to use you. You will, a witch can't even curse you if you live holy. You cannot curse whom God is blessed, and God blesses the righteous and the holy. Okay, but the sinful people, uh, demons. Uh, never leave them alone and then the witches put marks and gems on them to rob and to steal from them and if they live in sin then they're able to do that to them so the Lord wants y'all to come out of sin he wants you to repent and he wants you to be holy and he's going to shorten the days for you you will be called the very elect and the days will be shortened for you and you will not have to go through the hour of trial that's going to come on everybody else. Don't you want to be caught up? Don't you want to go and be held in a place where God can protect you? Even if he doesn't take you 
into heaven. He would put you in a Goshen. He would put you in the ark, like Noah's ark, in the ark of his covenant. And even if you're somewhere in the world, he would say, heart not the oil and the wine, because you're taking communion. And, and the oil is in you, that's the Spirit of God. And the wine is in you, that's the blood of Jesus. That's Jesus. He's in you, and the Spirit's in you. That's the two witnesses. You know? So anyway, the Lord is saying we're living in the days of that, abom that abomination of desolation. He told me that it's already started. And we, can't, we cannot wait around and look for a man to go and sit over in Jerusalem saying he is God. For we are already living in the falling away, in the great apostasy. For there's darkness in the earth and gross darkness in the people. And the Antichrist spirit, that white horse is riding. The Antichrist spirit has already went out. He's gone out to deceive and to... Um, He went out to deceive. Let's let's read that real quick so we'll remember exactly what that white horse. A lot of people say that's Jesus on that white horse. No, that's not Jesus. Not when he opened that first seal. That the seals that is not Jesus. Jesus is going to be riding on that white horse coming at the end, not uh, at the beginning. Okay, so. He opened, it says that only the Lamb could open the seals. And when the Lamb opened the seals, we heard a noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts said, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. Jesus has already got a crown. Okay? So this is, and Jesus don't ride with a bow. He has a sword coming out of his mouth, okay? And this one had a bow and a crown. And, um, and it was given to him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Yes, that's what they're doing. That's what the Lord told me. And if you want, and, uh, Matthew 24, so this is Revelation 6, and um, 2, 6, 2, 6, 2, all right, that's already started, and Matthew 24 and 15, the abomination of desolations, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, that's where Satan lives inside of people. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get in them. He's trying to defile them. He's going to sit and say that he is God. Let the reader understand that read it. Then let them which be in Judah, that's in praise, let them flee. Let them flee up to the mountains. That means up to the mountain of God. And, and then if you want to read more about it, go to Daniel chapter 8. It tells all about the abomination of desolations. There's going to be a host given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it's going to cast down truth to the ground and it's going to practice and prosper. But, but that he's, he's going to have a host. That's the demons. He's got a demonic host. And he's got a bunch of people too that are with him. And they're going to be against that daily sacrifice. They're going to be against the holy covenant that we have with the Lord. They're going to be against even taking communion. And, and don't you think Satan's not going to send people out? He's going to send people out to try to talk you out of taking communion. He's going to send people out to try to talk you into not like uh, separating you from prayer. And uh, if you hang around people that are lukewarm, it'll make you lukewarm. So the Lord wants you to be privy to these things. He wants you to know that uh, we're already in the time. It, and, and two, it says, then he heard his saints speaking one to another about that daily sacrifice. And it's called the great, the, the transgression of de desolations. And, and so 
we're right about at the precipice when the two witnesses are supposed to come out. Okay, these two witnesses are supposed to be the 140 and 4,000. That's what the Lord's been telling me. And we're right at the precipice where the two witnesses are supposed to come out. But we've got some prophets that are telling us that uh, it has to start out with three days of darkness. And uh, the Lord did give me something uh, yesterday about that it's going to be the evening and the morning. When the day of the Lord begins, it's going to start. The evening and the morning will be how it starts. So it is going to start at night. It's going, but it's so it's going to be the evening and the morning. It's going to be that last day, and it's going to last for. It's going to be a seven-year day. The day of the Lord is going to last for seven years. Quit, Nish. I guess I'm going to have to go. Um, it's late, and these animals are just crawling all over the place. <laughs> I've got like three or four cats, and they're just um, walking it all over. So I'm going to let y'all go, but I'm sorry I've been on so long. And I'll just see y'all tomorrow. I love you very much. I um, hope that you understood some of this. And I'm sorry if you didn't like it. I thought it was okay. But I know I got interrupted a lot. And I can't remember if I gave you everything that God told me to give you. But I'm doing the best that I can. All right. Love you very much. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.